Why, hello, YouTube. I believe I'm going to label this one getting real. Um, there's a lot of problems going on in this world. Uh, and really, they need to be talked about. We spend, on average, many days uh, with Joe at 15 years old. He's right along. None of the rest of the guys will stand up to it and hold up to it. That's what separates us from everybody else. So it's no offense to everybody else, but uh, I've raised Joe to be weird to you. Uh, I've tried to walk my life being weird to you. Uh, and I've done that <coughs> on, on purpose. And I wanted to be a piece of the wheat separated from the chaff that gets burned. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do, what our stands are, why we work so hard. And I'm going to talk to you about some things going on today. The confusion of everything. Uh, and I'm going to do it in my old man weird way. Uh, so just hang on. Go through the loop with me. Hang on. Listen. And go think about what I'm saying. Uh, Joe outworks everybody. Uh, anywhere. Um. I, I, I outworked everybody. Uh, we used to have what was called Hustler Awards. Uh, nothing sick, bent, or perverted about it. I mean, the guy who hustled the most, the guy who worked the hardest. And I typically, not every time, but I typically got that those awards. Uh, I was typically the guy on the football field or the guy in the gym. Uh, be it boxing, weightlifting, whatever, that the coaches were saying, be like that guy. Uh, I was by no means the most talented guy. I'm not, I'm not a physically huge, imposing man. But as I, as I grew into a man, I started figuring out, uh, and a man doesn't have a lick of damn sense, in general, most men, until they hit 35, 38 years old, maybe 40. They're in the mid to late 30s usually. And the uh, same applied with me. Half of us wreck our lives <laughs> before we really, truly become manly. Uh but there's different ways of wrecking your life. I won't go into all that today. Uh, because, you know, a lot of lives get wrecked when you stand up for the right thing and you're not going along with the program. And 99.5% of the time or, or more, the program's not the right way. So... We're not program followers up in here. It's not what we do. It's not how I raise my son. It's not how my wife lives. It's not how my daughter lives. Uh, it's not what we do. Joe works two to two and a half hours in two workouts a day. So you're looking at Four, five, six hours, sometimes seven, of working. 
and digging deep. And it's not pleasant. There's nothing easy about it. Nothing. Well, I I wish we could be like him. The kids come into the gym. I wish I could be like him to Joe. And they're without fail. I can't do that. Every one of the kids. I can't do that. I wish I could, though. And almost without fail, uh, with the exception of a couple, every single one of them could be like Joe. But they refuse to go against the grain. Can't do it. Something engineered in the back of the head that comes up to the frontal lobes and right in front of your consciousness that says, nope, stop. And you got to get past that. You just got to get past it. Uh, You don't know on the other side of the screen what I see every day. Uh, (coughs) With concerns to what we do. So you don't have a clue, uh, no more than I really have a clue to what, what you do, uh, but I can assure you if Joe sticks with boxing, he's going to be a world champion, without a doubt, uh, you, uh, y'all can't see it, but I do, I see it every day, I see a guy that's hitting so much harder, so much stronger than Mike Tyson was when he was 15, than George Foreman was when he was 15. And to be honest with you guys, the only specialness occurring, the any that would be special with, that you, maybe you'd be thinking about, Out of all the things that you say, well, that's special. Uh, The only thing special is the hard work. The majority is not weird enough to a lot of time to it. They're too busy wanting to do what the world does. They want to lay back and watch the computer screen or the telephone and watch something ignorant and stupid. People want to laugh. They want to get their minds off of the hard stuff. It's human nature. But that has to be overcome. It just does. Um, We're living in a world today, every sitting champion in every weight class. uh, I'm talking all of them. The whole damn lot of them. There's nothing great going on, nothing special, nothing uh, out of the ordinary with these guys. They're all ordinary. They're mediocre compared to other times. You could get into a reason why of that. It could be money. Uh, Worst thing that can hurt a boxer is a, a promoter. Yeah. Everybody's, oh, no. and these kids are, oh, this promoter's looking at me. They're all looking at Joe. All of them. If there, if there is one, they will be special. There's one organization I'm leaning towards. And it sure as hell wouldn't be who you would think, looking at me, that I would be leaning toward. He gets real with his fighters. He'll tell a fighter in a second something they don't want to hear. A lot of people consider him the greatest. A lot of people can't stand him. Yeah, that guy. That's, if, if things rocked today, 
that'd be the only option. And I'd have to sit down and talk to him for two or three days. The money he would get, he would have to earn. See, because we don't operate like you, like most of you do. Uh, we're not going to go kiss somebody's ass to make them a lot of money. Not how it works. Not how it works up in here. We've been beat down, downtrodden, spit on, kicked, went without, and got through it. We got through it all. Still going through it. Still going through it. I almost beat a, the, the guy that works for the gas company up yesterday morning. Long drawn out I could go through, but I'll sum it up for you. Uh, pure hell. If you look in my eye, you see red right here. It's my blood pressure going up. I, I busted a gasket yesterday in the morning. Had a wonderful Halloween evening. I was able to put... A big smile, big smile on one kid's face that treats my son and I very good and my wife. Little, little kid. And we put the smiles <clears throat> on a lot of people. And we had to go outside to hunt them down to give them things. But I enjoyed that. Best Halloween I've had in 50 years, minimum 50 years. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it in my heart. Uh, and then later last night, we're coming back into, I live in a gated community here. And the guy at the front desk handed me a paper turned out to be a bill and it was the gas bill something of which my wife went five days worried about because here they'll cut your gas the the day it's due if it ain't paid they'll send somebody out, out to cut it well they didn't give us a bill till uh after 8 30 at night where there was no place to pay the bill uh you can't just put something in an envelope here and send it out but these people having a a mail system, that just it would never happen. They could have all the money in the world, but to create a functioning mail system, never. So they sat on that bill, and we didn't beat it down quick enough that next morning, the day after Halloween, to pay it. I'm sitting here today. The guys got cut off yesterday in the morning. I almost lost my cool and beat the shit out of this guy. Uh, and people, we didn't get the bill on purpose. And a lot of people paid for that. Uh, the guy that runs this place out here, the big shot, the head honcho, sat back in his chair on his side of his desk listening to me yelling at the top of my voice and everyone out here overhearing it for one hour. And I told this man every time now, from this point moving forward, that somebody's fucking around with us, you lose an hour. And he understood that. And eventually it'll move up and escalate from there, I told him. Be careful. You can go around and do this to a bunch of effeminates. You can't come do it to us. We're weird. We work hard. We fly straight. Or as straight as we can because you want to talk about imperfectness, we embody that. So you guys need to work.
you need to work harder. You want to spend an hour and 20 minutes uh, every day as a, a boxer that's just started out on technical things. That's the complete ass backwards way to do things. You got to build your body. If you can't build your body, you can know everything known to man about boxing, but you'll have no heart and you'll quit. And we see a plethora of that today. Everybody's quitters. Referees come in and prematurely stop these things. Fighters take a knee and go no more. Sickening, greedy pieces of junk. And then want to complain about they need more millions. We're weird over here. We don't buy into bullshit. We're all stocked up on crazy around here. We ain't taking in no more. We're not believing no more of it. All right. We're going to move on. This is to Christian friends. Yeah, just really, you know me, I'm hard. Get your ass the hell up out of if you are in a Zionist church. The half of you are going to be like, what's a Zionist church? A Zionist church is the Jews today are God's chosen people. You have to back them at all costs. Death and destruction moving forward for on their behalf. Now hear me out. I'm not going to be against what's going on today. I am on Israel's side in that. But hear me out. Pushing and prodding forward for that. And half of you idolize idolatry Israel, the sitting country of Israel today, over Jesus Christ. I got news for you. No one's going to heaven. Not even one of them. Whom do not believe on the name of the Lord. I want every single one of you. The older people, they're so fucked up and wedged off in their brains. They can't see anything. And they never will. A lot of old dogs you can't t teach new tricks to. Just not interested. But I'm telling you the truth. And I'm telling you, go investigate what I'm telling you. And you'll see everything I'm telling you is biblical. The Bible is not dispensated throughout. It's just not. The Bible's crisp, clear, and cleanly. Telling you and me what has happened, what's going on today, and what's going to happen tomorrow. You can't you can't sit in the Old Testament without the New Testament and have everything figured out. You just can't do it. The New Testament is your authority if you are claiming to be a Christian. It's the new covenant. And you, you're not getting to heaven without it. It's just crystal clear. If you do not have the king of all kings, the most mighty and incorruptible, non-corruptible, the strongest the world has ever seen, if you don't have him, Christ Jesus, you ain't going to heaven. No Jew is. No, no, nobody is. If you go back into the Old Testament and you look into the book of Zechariah, you are going to see. Uh, now, I'm, I'm going off memory here. I believe it's only that, there, that, 
that they are going to herd themselves back in Israel. God's not putting them back there. And only 7,000 of them are going to make it. And here's the thing. When God returns and he starts decimating, there's only going to be 7,000 Jews in all of Israel that are that are going to be saved. But yet, maybe because I bring the truth of the biblical scripture up, you want to call me a Jew hater or an anti-Semite. <coughs> it is you. It is you people sitting here uh, not holding any Jewish uh, accountability to these people. No accountability. They just do what they wish because God wants it. The people that have been grafted in, those whom love and believe on Christ Jesus, on Jesus Christ, you are the Jew today. I am the Jew today. Uh, go read uh, Romans chapter 11 pretty much spells most of it out. Let's go take a look, see. But I'm sitting here telling you the most anti Semitic group, sect, religious sect of people is the Zionists, the ones that just hold no harm. Israel can do no harm, the Jew can do no harm. They are just chosen by God irrespective of what they're doing. Well, if you really believe the Bible, here's what, you're the anti-Semitic one. Because you push to get all these people together, as many of them there as you possibly can, on a piece of land that's vastly smaller than the original Judea and Israel. That were both one, even though they were separate. Israel were the evil tribes to the north that were worshiping Baal, the ones that Christ attacked, and the ones he is going to come back in his bodily form and murder, kill off on the last day. And it is you who has backed by idiots like fat man John Hagee, uh, whom left his wife for the church secretary, by the way, whom you all have just brushed over or not even cared or bothered enough to see, and really you don't care. It is you, verminous scoundrels, snakes in the grass, that are the anti-Semites, because you are trying to hurt as many of them there as you can, knowing if you believe in the Bible now, that 7,000 of them are only going to make it. There's going to be a remnant of them. Go read Romans chapter 11. There's going to be a remnant of us as well because the church has fallen off. You, you hear a pastor talking today. If you talk to a preacher or listen to one for more than 10 minutes and you don't hear something super shocking to you that and you don't start saying boy he's going to get pounded for this boy he's going to get pounded for saying that 10 minutes of them spouting off at the mouth and if you don't hear anything that's blowing you away hey, I can't believe they said that uh, that the masses of the people that the woke crowd's not going to come after. You're dealing with a satanic pastor. You're dealing with a wolf in sheep's clothing. If you have been going to church two weeks, if you just started going this past Sunday, and you sat in there for 45 minutes or an hour, <coughs> and you did not hear something shocking against this world, that you were like, I'm glad we're in here. 
and not out there in the streets saying this in this day we live in. You are sitting in a church with a listening to a wolf that looks like a sheep to you who is going to eventually growl and eat and just rip your flesh apart because that's where they're leading your soul. And you better wake up. You better start getting weird. You better start getting unusual. To all my athlete friends out there, every last one of you, we've got Riddick Bowe, Evander Holyfield, Lennox Lewis, uh, several BKFC guys. Whom are the champions today, mind you? Uh, they're the real champions today. They still fight. So, if you got to the beginning, I'm just talking about boxing in generality. Boxing gyms in generality. Folks, make no mistake about it. These bare knuckle guys fight. They are digging deep. They are risking more. It's a combination of all of them. Uh, we, we've even got uh, a few professional baseball players, uh, people that knew my uncle, who played for the Cubs, the Angels, and the Padres, that know my cousin that played for Montreal, the Expos, whom are now the Nationals. Uh, we got a lot of a variety of people, NFL football players, former. A lot of people. And that, you know what I'm going to tell every single damn one of you? Every single cotton picking one of you. It is now the time for everybody to be looking at you. If you are professed the king, you need to defend the king. God does not need your defending nor mine. But who in their right mind is going to pledge loyalty? Who, who? Not, let's not talk about in their right mind. Who is going to pledge loyalty to a crown? And then not defend the king's crown. Not be loyal to the king. But now, just think about that. What would you... Now, they've pledged the loyalty. They are professing the crown. Yeah, they won't defend it. They're backbiting and backstabbing against the crown. Think about that for a few minutes. What, what, what's a list of names you could give them? A hypocrite, liar, scoundrel, piece of dirt, piece of trash, piece of shit, uh, son of a bitch. I mean, it just goes on and on. <coughs> you can get wild with it. I'll, I'll let loose with words. I'll, I'll use them. Uh, you can call it my, my non-perfectness. And I call it being abrasive and strong. And you go back and you really look in the Bible and start reading it for yourself. You, you'll realize that several of these guys cut loose repeatedly. When they had to. When they're telling the truth. When they're fighting evil. Just think about the words that you would be using for the guy that's pledged his loyalty to the crown and then runs around and won't defend it. Would never defend the king he's pledged his loyalty to. 
show me the man who gets married today and after the ceremony they're out here going into the airport just using these examples and they're fixing to get on an airplane to go on a wonderful trip because they're very blessed financially and able to do that uh, uh, and the man's just married this woman a few hours before and he's in the uh, in the airport and someone starts verbally offending his wife and he just chooses to say it. doesn't say a word what would you call that man so to all of the champions to all of the young boys to all of the past champions to all of us let's start standing up today and saying no more you know there's a lot of tough guys that they can get in the ring they can get out there on the streets you wouldn't want to mess with them for nothing <coughs> they will they're head crackers but yet deep down on the inside some of them are spiritual cowards not all across the grain here. the world is starving for the man in the bare knuckle for the man in the MMA for the man in boxing in in all four of the big associations that they have or organizations associations to really stand up and go against the grain and uh, I mean really do it uh, no offense to Fury but uh, and I love the fact that he stands there and he's like you know this is only because of my king I am nothing without him but well, he's right about that but yet he'll get around all this debauchery and won't say one word about it. It's not very strong in his soul. But he's got his walk and he's walking his walk. And you got to give, give folks time. Maybe he'll end up seeing this. Maybe one of the family members will end up seeing this. Well, it ain't like we're getting 20 million views on a video. But the views we are getting are from quality people. A lot of which which don't agree with anything I hardly rarely say. But they're decent people. They're fundamentally good hearted because they don't come on and offend me. You know, it, it, the, the closest I get to being offended is someone saying, well, you know what? Uh, you're real forceful. You might want to rethink your approach there. And I just try to tell them that's may be for you but I'm sick and tired of it in the past 30 years of doing that and watching the world go to hell in a handbasket uh, it's just proven to me it doesn't work I'm going to be bold I'm going to be in the face with it and folks all you that watch this that hang on listening to this rambling I do this in the supermarket I'll stop so if somebody comes to me I say, well, oh I speak English well let's practice your English literally up here at the supermarket, you know, we got their spots with the little umbrellas, you know, you sit out there and eat and drink a cup of coffee. Somebody speaks English, I'll go out there and say, sit down, well, yeah, let's practice your English. What do you know about Jesus Christ? What, is this where this is going? Yeah, this is where it's going. You want to talk? We're going to talk about what I want to talk about. I'm old. I don't have the time you have. I'm going to dictate this thing. And people will sit and listen. And, you know, what they start off thinking is crazy as hell. They end up, oh my gosh. And people are shocked. Wisdom of age can do a lot. A lot to a younger person. It can, it can help anybody out. Uh, 
And look, folks, I want to get back to the original point. Uh, and, and I want to go to something that I, I just heard recently. If Orthodox believing religious Jews, uh, the overwhelming majority of which truly understand that the Israel today that's sitting over there, they're not having no part of. Uh, but, but the Palestinians need to really be thankful to whoever their God is, huh, which ain't too much. That Israel is not ran by a bunch of Orthodox Jews. Because I'm going to tell you something. If Orthodox Jews were in control, Let's say they had an election today and tomorrow in the afternoon they were in total control of the military and everything else. They'd kill everybody in Gaza, everybody in the West Bank, but it wouldn't stop there. They'd kill every Christian, Buddhist, Hindu practicer, everybody. Everybody that wasn't Jewish, they'd kill. That's their mandate, see. Their mandate is, just, is, is no better than the Muslims' mandate. And it's important to understand that. You've been lied to about all this biblical mythology, which is what it is about end time Israel and what's going to be going on. 7,000 of them God is going to spare and he is going to come down and kill the rest of them in Israel when he returns. I think Christians would be better served trying to reach Jewish Jewish people. And it's on the increase. There are a lot more uh, Messianic Jews. Those are, those are mean Jews that believe upon Christ that are Christians. They just happen to be in the, the Jewish bloodline, but, but they worship Christ. That number's growing, but these Zionists aren't trying to reach any Jews. Because these Zionists really don't have the true God themselves. No more than the Muslim over here has the true God. They're just death and destruction. And I'm not really pulling for any of them. Here's what I am pulling for. I'm not into the bullshit thing. Well, Israel needs to react tactically and just get those that killed uh when they invaded and committed all those terrorist acts and kidnapped and chopping babies' heads off, which did happen, by the way. Did happen. I'm beyond that. Because, see, I sat and watch, and I see, and, and when I look at uh, Al Jazeera News, and they're in neighborhoods throughout Gaza, and the swarms of people are in the street. Kill every American. Kill every Jew. Uh, no, I don't take kindly to that. Nor does the Bible tell me to. Uh, you want to talk about something that's been very perverted. Uh, <laughs> praying for your enemy means praying for your enemy's soul. That verse has been grossly perverted and the love of Christ has been grossly perverted and you know, if I can just reach any of you um, here's who I stand for I stand for my king my king is none other than the king of kings Jesus Christ that's it. That is it. I like Donald Trump over here, but my uh, uh, I don't idolize him. Uh, you know, when, oh my God, somebody comes on the scene that actually says what they think. That should have been going on every all the time. Why in the hell does that amaze anybody? I've been doing that for uh, decade upon decade. The only difference is I don't have eleven billion dollars. I like him. 
Uh, he'll get my vote for sure. Uh, but my king and my undying loyalty will, goes to Jesus Christ. Period, point blank. I know it to be true. Uh, I spent not so much time in my universe, university studies, but mid-drift in life, I, I started devoting a lot of time researching things, looking, you know, well, why did we get the flood? Did the flood happen? Did it happen like the Bible describes it? And I've been shocked at the plethora of scientific evidence that all these things did happen. Uh, and the little bit of evidence that the so-called scientists, falsely so-called, push out there on the masses and get you all to believe in it. And uh, it's just mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. Uh, you know, when you watch these debates and you, and you see a scientist that is a Christian explaining something with the flood, the scientist that is an atheist, when they get hung up on something, they go to photons and neutrons. You don't understand. Uh, these neutrons, you don't understand. Ridiculous stuff. You know, our greatest astrophysicist today, Neil deGrasse, you can get up and if you feel like a woman, you should put makeup on and put pretty things and uh, maybe don't pierce your ears, but put clip-ons on because in the afternoon, you may, may be want to be a strong man. And maybe you don't want your ears pierced. Oh, my God. And this is supposed to be a man. Yeah, they, they are satanic. You look at the medical stuff. Um, turns out, I believe it was in Minnesota, I believe. Uh, maybe it was ne Nebraska or Kansas. I don't know why I'm thinking Minnesota. I'm thinking it's Nebraska or Kansas. But go look right now. Fauci was doing in 2018 gain of function research, funding it and in with it himself doing it on COVID viruses from bats from that lab that he had illegally brought into the United States and was illegally doing the gain-of-function research on And all that's come out just recently, very, very a day, few days. Yeah, nobody's going to jail. So it pleases me and it pleasures me when you look at me and you say, isn't he odd? In him and his son, him and that boy, aren't they odd? Aren't they unusual? Why aren't they weird? Because we don't want to be like you, anybody else. We don't want to be like the people in this world. We outwork everybody. We try our best to outthink everybody when we can we do our best to out research anybody and we do our best to out talk anybody so just wake up people there's a lot of stuff coming and it's not going to be wonderful stuff and this poof you're going to get sucked up like a vacuum cleaner that ain't happening uh, that's another one I can biblically destroy. Uh, and oddly enough, when this Zionism started in church, the vacuum cleaner started in church too. Uh, it's all been perpetrated. And really the belief is, heard them all, this is a Zionist belief in a nutshell, 
herd all these Jews up because we love them in Israel. Then all but 7,000 of them get murdered. But don't worry, in the process and the carnage going on to the rest of the world, we are going to get sucked up like a vacuum cleaner and we won't have to go through it. That's the belief in the nutshell. That's Zionism. And it's sick, bent, and twisted. And it's a cult. And uh, Islam is no more of a, an occult than Zionism churches are. They're both cults because they are both founded in lies, founded in deceit ran by wolves in sheep's clothing. So I'm going to end it here. I want to say Christ bless all my brothers and Christians. And all my, yeah, all my fellow brothers in, in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ. And prayers for you whom, whom do not believe in Christ. A sincere prayer that you'll start looking and investigating and that you will come to the one true God, the one true King of Kings.